What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that I haven't visited in a while but I wanted to revisit it in today's video and give you guys an update for the December 2022 format. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. We're on the road to 8,000. The goal is to get to 8,000 before the new year. I know we can make it happen. I believe in every single one of you. So thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right. So just before we get into the video, I do want to say the really cool thing about counter fairy is counter traps in general are good going first, but they can be also really good going second, especially paired up with the floodgate. So I think it's a really cool thing that this deck can go first and go second. It has a lot of different options, but let's get right into it. Now we are starting off with three bountiful Artemis. Bountiful Artemis is one of your most important monsters. This card lets you draw a card each time a counter trap resolves. So it gets you deeper into your deck one of your most important monsters so you do want to protect this as much as you can and it being at 1600 is pretty important because it helps you push for a lot of damage then we're playing three guiding ariadne this is pretty much the whole reason the deck is playable because if this card is in your pendulum zone you do not have to pay life points to activate counter trap cards there's another fact that says you don't have to discard cards to activate counter traps as well we're not playing any of the counter traps that discard so we're only playing the ones essentially that cost life points and this card makes it so that you're never going to be paying life points for your counter traps which is absolutely insane it's it's also 1700 so if you needed to help push for a game push for a little bit more damage it's very very powerful and then we're playing three barrier statue of the heavens barrier statue of the heavens is very important in today's format we know it's a tier zero tier limit format they're all dark monsters if they can't out the barrier statue of heavens they're in a really tough spot same thing applies with sprite and a lot of these other combo decks as well so barrier statue of heavens is a very powerful card and that's it for the monsters we're playing nine monsters it's really easy to get into you don't want to play more than these because then you start breaking up monsters and you'd never want to brick on the monsters you want to see a combination of one to two monsters with trap cards essentially right so that's why we're playing these ratios i think these are the best ratios now i will say this though all right there was a time where i was only playing two of the barrier statue and the last card i was playing was actually an inspector border just as another form of a floodgate but i decided to play three barrier statue instead because it synergizes with one of the spell cards i'm going to be showing you guys soon so that's why i decided to play three of this but you guys can play the inspector border as well that card is also really good into today's format then we're playing the one double or nothing like i said you're only playing a few monsters they're all pretty low attack i mean six 16 and 1700 isn't too bad, but it's not going to be able to push for a lot of damage. So if you're not going to be able to OTK your opponent right away, double or nothing gives you that option where it's just kind of like, hey, I've had enough. I'm going to win the game now. So that's why we're playing this. Of course, we're playing the Utopia package in the extra deck as well. Then we're playing three Extravagance, three Tides of the Brethren, as well as three Super Poly. I'm going to explain each one of these and why I'm playing these ones. So here we're playing three Extravagance specifically over Prosperity, because I think in a counter trap deck like this, and I've always felt through testing, you just want to see as many cards as possible. You want to get into your monsters as fast as possible. Possible. Yes, prosperity helps you dig into six cards and then you get to pick the one card. However, digging into more cards, I feel like is just a little bit more prevalent in this deck. That's why I like playing the extravagance. It's the plus one rather than prosperity is kind of like a one for one. But if you guys wanted to play prosperity as well, that is another option. Now you guys might be wondering why you're not playing duality. And that's because of this card right here, Ties of the Brethren. This card is absolutely insane. You pay 2000 life points, you target a level four or lower monster you control, which is all of your counter fairies. And then you get to special summon two monsters from your deck with the same type and the same attribute. All of these monsters are light and all of these monsters are fairies. So what that means is that if you normal summon your battle for Artemis, you can then summon your Ariadne as well as your barrier statue. Now you have three monsters on the board. If you have that backed up with two or three counter traps, you're in such a good position. So that's why I like the three ties of the brethren. That's why we're not playing the pot of duality, but we are playing the super polymerization. This is another card that you can set going first. It helps you break boards going second. It helps you as well, because again, playing trap decks. Yes. Like I said earlier, counter traps with floodgates can help you break boards going second. However, it does prolong the duel. And if your opponent says, up too big of a board sometimes that won't matter super polymerization helps you when you're going second as well because now you can break pretty much any board with this card and then you can set up your own board right you're never really going to be going for otk with this deck so that's why i think super polymerization helping you break boards and then setting up your own board is really important i will say this i didn't mention this earlier ties of the brother has an effect where after you use this you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn so it's not like you can just go ties of the brother and summon multiple monsters and then go into utopia double it doesn't work that way so keep that in mind but you can still super polymerization before you go Tides of the Brethren. So at least this way you're breaking your opponent's board and then you can normal summon a Bountiful and normal summon an Ariadne 
then you go ties of the brethren etc etc so that's why it's really powerful to be playing the super poly going first going second of course then for the counter traps we're playing i think a total of 12 counter traps we don't want to be playing more i think 12 is the exact number you need and we're just playing the best ones we're playing three solemn warning you want to stop the normal summons this card is really important to stop normal summons as well and that's because one of the main things that i said earlier was that you need to be able to protect your barrier statue if you have barrier statue on the board and let's say you're going up against a tier limit player they can just normal summon one of their bigger tier limit names i'm pretty sure hovness and sheeran are both bigger than this i don't remember Merley's attack but hovness and sheeran i'm pretty sure are both bigger than this so they can just go normal summon and then attack over this and then do the rest of their combos right well that's the reason why you're playing something like solemn warning this way your opponent can't just normal summon any card and then get over your barrier statue or any of your other fairies as well so solemn warning is really good in that sense it's also really good to stop speller traps that can get them to monsters that can eventually beat your monster right so that's why solemn warning is really powerful of course we all know three solemn strike solemn strike is one of the most powerful trap cards in the game three solemn judgment of course to protect your back row this card mostly is just used to protect when your opponent goes lightning storm or harpy's feather duster or just breaking your boards in general solemn judgment is really important but then in a lot of other situations it's also really important to negate summons so it's very very powerful in that sense and then we're playing another card that's basically like solemn strike it's like a pseudo solemn strike we're playing three of the draco utopian aura draco utopian aura is essentially like a solemn strike except that it doesn't stop monsters in the hand it only stops monsters in the field that's still perfectly fine though you're not having to pay life points or anything for this and if you don't have access to your guiding ariadne it doesn't matter because you're not really paying a cost to use this card so it's kind of nice in that sense where you're playing a counter trap that doesn't require you to pay life points or discard cards and then depending on the situation has another really cool effect where if you have a monster in your hand you can banish it from your hand and then special summon the monster that you negated and destroyed with this so there's a lot of situations where if you're taking an opponent's baron or you're taking an opponent's like big boss monster you can actually just banish one of these monsters in your hands take their monster and now you can use that to play a little bit of a beatdown strategy right so that effect doesn't come up too often but when it does it is really powerful then we are playing some floodgates we're playing three rivalry as well as three goes in match why are we playing three and three well all your monsters are light and all your monsters are fairy so what that means is that you can play rivalry you can play goes in yes it does lock you out of your extra deck however locking you out of your extra deck is not as big of a deal as locking your opponent completely out of their extra deck right because you can just play it slow you can sit on two monsters and just poke every single turn if your opponent can't out rivalry plus a goes in match then they're kind of stuck now this is why this deck is also pretty good going second outside of just a super poly if you're going second and you set a goes in match or you set a rivalry and then you have a solemn strike set as well you can flip the goes in you can flip the rivalry now if your opponent has a way to negate those or get those off the field you can flip solemn strike or solemn judgment etc etc and then this way these cards are going to stick on the board and then you're going to be able to break your opponent's board with both a rivalry and or a goes in match or both right so that's why i think these cards are really really powerful because essentially it helps you break boards going second as well you, of course these are always better going first but solemn strike or solemn judgment plus one of these is very very powerful then lastly like i said you want to protect your monsters these monsters are pretty small you don't play that many monsters you want them on the field you want them to stay on the field and one of the main ways to remove these cards off the field is by battle and so we're protecting our monsters with three storming mirror force storming mirror force says when an opponent's monster declares an attack you return all attack position monsters your opponent controls back to their hand so it's really really powerful in that sense you could play drowning mirror force but drowning requires you to have no monsters and at that point if you're not protecting your monsters there's no point to play with mirror force in my opinion right because as long as you're not getting otk'd it doesn't really matter so for that reason i think storming mirror force is really important in this deck protects your barrier statue again there's not a lot of decks right now that are light based that are really really powerful so barrier statue of the heavens is insanely powerful in this deck so that's why of course the storming mirror force to protect this to protect your bountiful artemis is very very important so that's it for the protection cards the floodgates the counter traps the 40 card main deck right here i think it's very very consistent i don't know if i would change up too much again the only thing that i would consider changing is maybe playing two of the barrier statue and then an inspector border as a different option i really like the three barrier statue that's just another option let's get into the extra deck here the extra deck doesn't matter too much however i will say it is really important to play multiples because we are playing extravagance now if you guys wanted to play this deck and maybe play prosperity instead then you guys can switch up the extra deck a little bit but because we're playing extravagance we're playing multiples of some of the main cards we're playing two garura two starving venom two mud dragon as well as a one draco stapelia these are our super poly targets so we want to be playing multiples of each draco doesn't come up as much as the other ones that's why i'm playing two of each of the other ones and just the one drago but as long as we have access to a super poly target we're perfectly fine going first going second it gets us another body on the board then we're playing the two gaga cowboy this card does help you in time so that's why i like playing the cowboy it's, it's really really powerful especially when you're doing a lot of chip damage with these cards and you have opponent is down to like you know 800 500 life points whatever it is this can help you just go for a game then we're playing the two underworld goddess this 
card essentially is just to out big boss monsters that you can't otherwise out. You can actually cut these cards. I just like playing them because sometimes you'll be stuck on multiple monsters, but then your opponent has a monster that you just can't out, right? So for that reason, I do like playing the Underworld Goddess, but you guys can cut this. You guys can play some more super poly targets. This one's not as important. It's just a really cool card that has come up for me. So that's why I'm playing it. But again, you guys can just play more super poly targets. The extra deck doesn't really matter too much as long as you're playing the main things, which are the super poly targets, the Cowboys, and these cards. Two Utopia Double as well as two Utopia. This just kind of helps you go for game, especially turns two, turns three after you set up your board. Your opponent puts up a monster. You try to negate a lot of their actions. So they're kind of just stuck on something. And then you go for this, just try to push for game. So that's it for the deck. It's 40 card main deck, 15 card extra deck. Counter Fairy is a very cool deck. Yes, it's a little bit underrated. People don't talk about it enough, but I think this deck is very, very cool. Bountiful Artemis getting you to draw cards. Oh, also, I do want to say this just before we go here. I want to say that a lot of people are going to be like, hey, but the draw cards with Bountiful Artemis doesn't work with Extravagance. That's true. But keep in mind, you're going to be using Extravagance on your turn, and then you're going to be using the counter traps mostly on your opponent's turn when you have Bountiful Artemis on your side of the field. So in that sense, it never actually conflicts, or it rarely really conflicts where essentially you're using a counter trap to draw a card and you have Extravagance up. Like that maybe happens in the late game. But again, at that point, you're probably going to be winning the game anyway. So that's it for the main deck, 40 cards, 15 cards in the extra deck. Like I said, the main things are the super poly targets and the utopias, and then everything else you guys can play around with. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is Counter Fairy for the December 2022 format. This deck I think is very cool. The fact that it can incorporate floodgates like Rivalry and Gozen. Most decks can't actually play both of those, right? So the fact that you can play both of those and the really powerful counter traps, as well as stuff like Storming Mirror Force, as well as a barrier statue, which is absolutely insane in today's format. So I think this deck is really, really cool. Not saying you're going to top YCS with this deck, but it is a very fun deck and something that you guys can take to a locals and have a good time with. So thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like this subscribe if you guys haven't already we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll find it right here so i hope you guys enjoy thank you guys all for being here make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're on the road to 8,000. thank you guys all with that spanko signing out peace